Hello, everyone. My name is Rob Higarita, and I'm a Principal Technical Account Manager at AWS, and I'm based out of Austin, Texas. Welcome to AWS Supports You, where AWS Support Experts provide tips to optimize performance in the cloud, lower costs, and provide you with best practices and design considerations. And joining me today, we have Chris from the AWS Enterprise Support Specialist TAM organization. Can you give us a quick introduction, Chris? Sure, Rob. Hi, I'm Chris Bates. I'm a Specialist Technical Account Manager, or STAM, for cloud operations. I'm based in the UK, and I've been helping enterprise support customers with operational excellence for about five years now. Great. Thanks, Chris, for joining us today for this episode. And today we're going to be introducing you all to the operations review. You may have seen a previous episode where we covered a little bit about preparing for an operations readiness review. Uh, but today we're going to we're going to specifically focus on how customers who don't have enterprise support or enterprise on ramp uh, can carry out their own operations review and improve their operational best practices. But before we get too far into the details of today's episode, a quick note to our attendees online. Please feel free to use that chat window on the right-hand side of your screen to ask questions today. Let us know where you're joining us from uh, and share your thoughts and everything throughout the episode. We really do look forward to hearing from you, so please take advantage of that chat and you can ask Chris some questions about using this operations review. I'm also going to provide a link to our survey, uh, so if you'd like to leave us some feedback and let us know how we did, you can fill out that survey for us and leave us that feedback. So, Chris, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to you to start us going through uh, what we're going to be talking about today. Fantastic. Thanks, Rob. So what we're going to take a look at is, first of all, what is an operations review? We'll take a look at the AWS support plan to include a technical account manager and access to the specialist towns to help you with things like operations reviews. We'll take a look at why we do an operations review. What benefits does it bring to you as the customer? And then we'll move on to how it fits into the pillars of the well-architected review framework. We'll take a look at operational excellence, which is essentially what the operations review is all about. And then we'll take a look at the phases we go through when we're conducting an operations review. Finally, and not least, please stay tuned, because what we'll do is we'll take a look at how you can conduct an operations review on yourselves. Really helpful if you are not in the position of having on-ramp or enterprise support. Okay, let's take a look at what is an operations review? So the operations review is a standard process for discussing cloud operations best practices. And typically we're looking to identify three to five improvement opportunities. So these are areas where you can help yourself by reducing your operational risk and, and hopefully taking some of that firefighting or risk from a major uh, incident off yourselves. So, Within AWS Enterprise Support, we've been conducting operations reviews for since early 2016, so quite a while now. Um, and until recently, it was only available to Enterprise Support Plan customers. Recently, we launched the on-ramp support plan, and they are the option of an operations review on an annual basis as well. But that still leaves a whole bunch of folk who don't have access to a technical account manager to conduct an operations review with them. So we'll get on to how you can conduct them yourselves. But first of all, just to kind of put that in a little bit of context, if we use the analogy of improving physical fitness, some folk may want to use a personal trainer and get a really customized support in their journey. Others may be happy attending exercise classes at their local gym. Others still may be happy with consuming guidance from an app or YouTube or Twitch. Let's take a couple of questions from the from the chat and we'll come right back. Hey, Chris, thanks for the introduction so far. So no uh, attendee questions yet. So audience, if you have any questions, please again, take advantage of that uh, chat box over there on the right hand side of your screen uh, and have some questions here for Chris as we go going through today. I do have a question though, really quickly. So you mentioned, you know, we've got the different support plans that are available and how um, enterprise support and enterprise on ramp. But just a question, are the specialist TAMs available to the non-enterprise customers to help with any of the reviews that you're going to be talking about today? Um, if so, you know, how does our audience engage you all? Sure. Unfortunately not, that there are just simply too few of us and too many of those customers <laughs> out there. So what we'd say is you can reach us indirectly through things like um, AWS Repost, the forums, mm -hmm. where you can ask our questions on operational excellence 
I feel community, including the specialists, we're there and we will answer those questions and give you a guidance. We just can't be there in person in the way we can with our enterprise support customers. Great, makes sense, yeah. Um, and Repost is a great resource for you to be able to kind of get some help from AWS experts, so definitely check that out as well. So uh, I'll let you go ahead and continue on through some more of your material today, and audience, just remember to take advantage of that chat box. Fantastic. Okay, so let's just take a look at why we do an operations review. So operations and discipline, it, it's a job you'll never finish with because you're going to be adding features, you're going to be adding functionality, you're going to be making improvements to your workloads and your environment. And when you do that, you're in, in bringing in new risk and change. You don't want to keep everything the same because you'll never improve and your product will gradually fall behind everybody else. But at the same time, you need to manage that risk. And that's where operations comes in. It's the risks associated with patching, state configuration, change management, deployment, monitoring, logging, all of the usual things. And we use the operation review to reflect on how we're doing and where we can make the most improvement to reduce our risks, to make our life as operation specialists easier and delight our customers. So the kind of key benefits we're looking at are we develop a shared understanding of the operations priorities. This is typically between the TAM and the customer's operation specialists, but you can still achieve the same thing reflecting for yourselves. The discussion internally can be very powerful. It provides an opportunity to explain AWS's operational best practices, as well as an operate, uh, sorry, as well as an opportunity to identify some of those risks and the potential impacts if those risks aren't addressed. We'd help you define your development opportunities around operations and help you prioritize what you can tackle now and what things may need a little bit of pre-work to be able to engage them properly. And finally, we're looking to reduce the frequency and severity of operational incidents. They're not good for anybody. So let's work to reduce them. Okay, so I mentioned earlier on that the operations review links into the well-architected framework. So you've probably heard of the well-architected review, which is scoped at a workload or application and looks at all six pillars for that one workload. So what are the six pillars? Well, first of all, there's operational excellence, which I may be biased, but it's one of the most important. Secondly, we have security. You need to make sure that you have the ability to protect information, systems, and assets and deliver business value through risk assessments and mitigation. Reliability, the ability of a system to recover from infrastructure or service failures, dynamically acquire compute resources to meet demand and mitigate disruption using misconfigurations such as misconfigurations or transitory networking issues. Performance efficiency, the ability to use compute resources efficiently to meet system requirements and to maintain the efficiency as demand changes and technology evolves. Cost optimization, the ability to avoid or eliminate unnecessary cost or suboptimal resources. And finally, sustainability. Guidance on how AWS can help you to reduce your footprint and best practices you can use to improve the sustainability of your workloads. With the operations review, we're going to focus in on the operational excellence, but we're not going to look at it from the workload perspective. We're looking at it from an operational scope. So if you're a startup, that might be your whole organization. If you're part of a larger organization, it may be a business unit or a product family. But it's the group level at which you're conducting your operations. Some of the operational excellence principles are operations as code. You perform your same engineering discipline as you would use for application code to your entire environment. You can define your entire workload, applications, infrastructure as code, and update as code. You can subscript your operational procedures and automate their execution by triggering them in response to events. By performing operations as code, you can reduce the human error and enable consistent responses to events. Make frequent, small, reversible changes. So for folk who spend their life in the world of DevOps, this is nothing new. But for folk who come from a more traditional operations background, this is something a bit different. 
You design your workloads to allow components to be updated regularly and to increase the flow of beneficial change into your workload. By making small incremental but reversible changes, you can reduce the impact when a issue is introduced. Refine operational procedures frequently. Like I said, operations is something where you're never done. There's always something you can learn from your recent experiences or from past issues. So keep reflecting. Anticipate failure. Uh, things fail all of the time. So perform pre-mortems, exercises to identify where the potential sources of failure are within your environment, your systems, or your processes. Last of all, and most important of all, learn from all operational failures, whether it's something that's public and is uncomfortable for you as an organization, or whether it is an internal issue where nobody was really affected, but they could have been. Okay, so let's take a look at some of the core areas for operational excellence. The first one is the organization. So very much a people oriented part of your environment. Organizational priorities, operating model, and organizational culture all play a part. Operate, your workload health, operational health, and event response. Prepare, excuse me, preparedness. Design for operations. You're going to be running a workload for far longer than you're going to spend doing that initial development cycle. So think about how you're going to operate it before you get there. Operational readiness. Um, Arvin, my colleague, mentioned in a previous episode how to go about conducting an operational readiness review. Mitigate deployment risk. If you're deploying all the time, making lots of small changes, put in there lots of safeguards and automated mechanisms to prevent errors and issues being introduced into production. And finally, evolve. Learn, share, and report. Really important to measure and be able to see your successes and also some of the things that didn't go so well. So let's take a look at the operations review phases. As I've already said a couple of times, most things in operations are a, a cyclic thing. So we're not going to do a single operations. We're going to iterate, which is really useful because it means that you don't necessarily have to put all of the effort up front and do a huge review that takes lots of time and resource. You can do, focus in one area and iterate. We'll come on to that in more detail later. So we start with preparation. This in a way is a form of preparation. We're sharing the discussion around what an operation review is, what's going to happen and who's going to do what. The review itself. This can take two to four hours if you go through the full set of questions. But you can pick and choose and take the elements that are going to give you the greatest benefit first and focus on those and pick up another question in the next cycle. The report. So within the well-architected tool, which we'll see later on, there is a reporting capability that highlights various risks. These are tend to be slightly tactical in nature, but still very helpful things to improve upon. When a review is conducted by a TAM or an STAM, we tend to be looking for more strategic patterns and ways to improve things in a more holistic fashion. Implementation. A review is all very well, but if it doesn't lead to action, then it's not going to improve things very much. So out of the review, identify those things that you're going to address in the short term. Make time to address them and allocate responsibility and resources to addressing them. Then schedule a follow-up. You need to come back to see whether or not you're making progress on implementing the changes you've identified and whether or not your risk position has changed at all. So in terms of an audience, who should be in the room for an operations review? Well, from organization to organization, job titles and roles change and vary an awful lot. These are some of the titles that you might find in your organization, but a good way to think about it is if an alarm was going off at three in the morning for a cloud-based workload, who's going to be paged? Who's going to be called in to help get back to green? Those are the kinds of people you probably want to have in the room. 
They're going to have a good knowledge of the processes, the systems, and the mechanisms that you have in place. Okay, let's go to the chat and see if we've got any questions. Hey, Chris, thanks for the information so far. Uh, I tend to agree with you, as you said, the operations one being one of the important sides. I just think it's a really important element, especially the last point that you just mentioned about, you know, who's going to get paged at three o'clock in the morning and knowing the right person to page at that time, because I know it's uh, not something that's enjoyable to get paged at three o'clock in the morning for something that you're not responsible for. <laughs> but being on page definitely, definitely focuses the mind. <laughs> yes, definitely so. So uh, no audience questions so far. Um, so audience, again, please feel free to use that chat on the right-hand side of your screen. But if you'll humor me, I have a couple questions that I want to ask just about some of the materials that we've gone over so far today. Um, so great. Appreciate it. Um, we have a lot of services. Um, and if we wanted to conduct an operations review, would we do so prior to adopting AWS services to see which ones like work best for our needs? Or would we use some different services and tools and then figure out, you know, after a few months, what would be the right way to do an operations review for those? Sure. So probably the easiest way to go about it is in the guidance notes, we'll see later on, it, it points you in the direction of different tools and different solutions that can help. Because the tools and solutions that are in the AWS portfolio are all charged month to month and there's minimal commitment there, it's worth just trying some of those out in terms mm -hmm. of, is this going to help us? Have I, have I clearly defined my idea as to how I'm going to solve this problem or this need? And if it turns out that that solution is not enough for you, at least you've got a really nice set of requirements to go and look for something else. Okay, great. Um, and then another question that I have here. Um, how are customers seeing benefits of these reviews? You know, so we're talking about doing one and kind of, you know, some of the items that are beneficial, um, but it seems like it might take some time. And, you know, of course, we want to make sure that customers' times aren't wasted. Um, it seems very helpful. So just kind of curious if you have any, you know, information about, you know, customers that have seen sure. benefits of doing one. So I, I don't have any names that I can reference, mm -hmm. but in terms of how it tends to help customers, operations is something where, it's, it's, it's difficult to be able to explain what's going on, what the risks are to somebody who's looking at it from, say, a business perspective, or perhaps someone who's looking at it from a product dev's perspective, because their perspective on the issues is going to be quite different. By using the standard questions and our guidance, you've got something to measure again. You've got data points that you can share with these other stakeholders and explain what you need of them. And also, it gives you an opportunity just to step back and to, to think about operations and, and how it's working or not working for you, rather than being very much in the moment and perhaps relying on your gut instinct, mm -hmm. which tends to be good, but it's very hard to explain. <laughs> Great. Um, and so going way back, you started off, you know, we were talking about the fact that, unfortunately, you know, um, yes, TAMs aren't available to non-enterprise for customers. I was curious, though, are there any AWS partners that maybe customers can engage to do well architected reviews with them um, in case they don't have that? Sure. So within the partner network, um, we've got partners that will engage on a number of different patterns. So one is they mm -hmm. may offer support plans of their own, which will differ in various ways from our own. But there are also those that will engage on a professional services basis, so on a more project orientated basis. Um, our partners tend to be very regional. So if mm -hmm. you take a look at the AWS support-led partners, then hopefully you'll find somebody in your area that offers the uh, level of service you're looking for. Great. Appreciate that information, Chris. Um, I'll let you go ahead and continue on here through the rest of your presentation. Appreciate it. Cool. Okay. So let's get stuck into conducting your own operations review. So we're going to take a bit of a look through the tools we use when we're conducting operations reviews, and I'm going to give you some tips and some guidance on how you can get the best out of them. First and foremost, we're going to be using the AWS Well Architected tool. So this is a console tool, which we launched a few years ago now, and it includes all of the questions we're going to use in the review, but also a whole bunch of guidance in the sidebar. We'll take a look at that as we go along. Um, so 
even if you haven't got the support of a TAM in the room with you, you do have plenty of guidance and assistance along the way from AWS. Okay, let's take a look at the well-architected console now. Okay, so as I mentioned earlier on, the well-architected reviews are orientated around a workload. So it says define a workload. If I was going to rename that for an operation review, I'd say define a review. We're going to set up a review. The other thing to bear in mind, like many of our services, the well-architected tool is actually regional. So the data is held regionally. So before you create your workload, just think about which region you're in and whether that's the best place to store your reviews for your environment. Okay, so let's get started. So we're gonna launch a workload and we're gonna capture some details. So you tend to only have one operations review, so we'll just call it operations review. We're going to add a little bit of a description just in case somebody who's looking through the console doesn't know what an operation review is. So we give them a bit of a hint as to what we've been working on. As we're going through and completing the properties, not all of them make sense in the context of an operations review. So we're going to highlight some regions because when we are operating in a particular environment, which regions we cover may be significant. We may need to factor in things like follow the sun support or maybe an outsource support provider covering uh, part of the out of hours. We're not going to list any accounts because we're looking at the whole organizational scope here. So adding accounts was just superfluous. We'll fill in a few details about who and what we do. And then let's get stuck in. So. The next thing is there are a number of lenses as well as the well-architected framework. For the kinds of workloads we include there, things like SaaS or the serverless, well worth exploring when you're looking at your well-architected reviews. We're just going to use the well-architected framework for the operations review. So we've selected that and we'll define our workload. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the review and we're going to find the questions that we need. Because we're looking at the operational excellence pillar, we're not going to need all of the questions. So let's just take a quick look there. So the first section is operational excellence. We've got 11 questions there. We're going to work our way through security and all of the other pillars, and we're just going to declare those questions out of scope. Because when we run the reassessment at the end, we're only interested in the, the operational excellence pillar. We may look at those other questions in other kinds of reviews. So we'll work our way through and we'll just get those filled out. It's a little tedious, but because you only have one operations review, you're only going to do it once. So it's worth the effort. Before we get on to answering our the first of the questions, we're just going to take a look at a couple of key features of the Well Architect tool and how they can help you. So let's just take a look at that. So the first one is language support. So although today we're discussing with you in, in English, there are folk all over the world uh, for whom English is not their first language. So to make life easier for them and to support their operations discussions, perhaps for people who have got language skills in English, what we've got is we've got all the questions, all the points in multiple languages within the console tool, and also the guidance. So on the right-hand side there, that pane, that's the guidance pane. So as you go through and look at different aspects of a question and different questions, contextual guidance will come up and support you in doing so. The other piece we're going to take a look at is how you can gain access to an expert. So the Ask an Expert button takes you through to the AWS Repost Forum. So if you have questions that go a bit deeper than the guidance answers, you can reach out on here and AWS field specialists will answer your questions for you. Okay, let's jump back to that question and start to work our way through answering a question. So here we are. It's really easy to get drawn in by the check boxes at the top of the pane. We'll get to them, but the more important thing is to look at each one of those headings, 
read the guidance, and think about how we address that particular capability in our environment. So let's do that for a couple of items. By capturing the, the detail, the explanation, maybe references to process or links to systems, we're gathering all the information that puts a, 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 the evidence down as to how we address that particular capability. Once we've looked at that and we compare it to the guidance, we can then decide whether or not we should check the box. And I'd encourage you to be brutally honest with yourselves when completing one of these, because if you can call out a risk or a problem and it can then be put onto a backlog to be addressed, you're going to make improvement. If you say it's all fine, then no one's going to look again for some time. And in the meantime, you might get called out, which nobody wants. Okay, so we're working our way through. We're just answering the questions and putting down some of the evidence there. We're not going to answer all of the points on here because watching me type is literally not that exciting. And what we'll do is we'll just reflect on those and mark off some of those boxes. Okay, let's just get a couple more bits down. What I would encourage also is, I'm kind of rushing here because I'm doing this in front of all of you for good folks, but when you're doing it for yourselves, take your time. You can always save and you can always come back. Uh, there's nothing to stop you from conducting review over a number of days. We all get interrupted by important requests or even operational issues that we need to deal with. The important thing is to keep coming back to it and keep working on it. Okay. I think we're about there. Let's just get a few points down and let's check off the items that we've we've got covered. Okay. So we now scroll down to the bottom here and we've got the option to save and exit or move on to the next question. So let's assume we've completed all we're going to do on this iteration. We can push into here and we can see that we've got a number of high risk items that have been identified. And if we were needing to share the, um, the findings of our operations with you with perhaps non-technical non colleagues who don't have access to the console, then we can use the generate report option to produce a PDF report. We can also use a really, really helpful feature. I mentioned about us coming back and iterating. The milestone feature allows us to create different versions of the report. So as we move forward and we conduct a review on a particular section, maybe adding to it over a number of weeks, and hopefully alongside that, we're also making changes and improvements, we can save a checkpoint, update, and move on. And we can see that progression. It's really important to uh, recognize the improvement and the changes that you're making as you go along. Okay. So there we go. We can see our first checkpoint or milestone there. And of course, as we add them, we'll add to that list. Okay, I think it's time to take some questions from the chat. Hey, Chris, thanks for showing us a little bit into the using the well protected tool on the console there to get starting answering some questions. Um, we did have one question that came in from the audience. Um, thanks, JibJab06. Um, They're wondering if I conduct my own operations review, can my results be shared with the TAM later for a more official review or are the processes different enough that we should need, that we would need to start again from scratch? No, definitely. So um, the really key thing is within the AWS console tool for Well Architected, you can share. So you've got the ability to share within the account, different folk with different IAM permissions, but you can also share between accounts. So perhaps if you have a governance team, you might want to share it internally with the account they use for tracking and auditing. But at the same time, you can reach out to your account team and they can give you an account to share it with, which is safe and secure on our side. 
of the uh, shared responsibility model where the TAM or the SA perhaps as well can work with you, reflect on the, your things you've found and maybe make additional guidance suggestions. Great. Yeah, I've actually had my customer that's done that with me before where they did a whole well architected by themselves to kind of set it over. And it is very handy for them to be able to share with us. Um, it's nice because it's not a completely different process, but it gives us the opportunity to ask them some questions about things to make sure that um, everything they answered really is, I don't want to say not truthful, but truthful, right, in nature, <laughs> that it's really, we scrutinize it just a little bit more, right, to make sure that things like, hey, do you actually have playbooks in place for this? And if they say, sure, we have some, we can be like, sure, we have some isn't, you know, fully in place. So <laughs> maybe we need to That's uncheck it. that or, that. or modify that. <laughs> And that's why those note fields are so, so helpful and so important mm -hmm. is the, the checkbox, it, it hints at the story. It doesn't tell the full story. Right. <laughs> Great. Uh, no other questions from the audience, but thanks for uh, walking us through some of this demo here, and I'll let you keep on going through it. Fantastic. Okay, so... So that brings us to to the end of that introduction. I was kind of hoping we'd have more questions from you folks at home. So if you have questions, please send them in now. We'll happily answer them. But a, a few things that uh, I would say worth thinking about. So I've worked with quite a few customers that have self-reviewed, and there's been a couple of themes that have been consistently come out of that. First of all, when you go through and you're answering those questions and you're being brutally honest with yourself, you can come out the other side and you can be looking at all the items that have been highlighted and it can be a bit overwhelming. It can be, you know, it seems like a, this is an impossible task. We, we've got to do so much. When, when are we ever going to find the time? Okay. So you face the same thing when you're starting work on a, a, a new workload. Treat it like a backlog. Work through, figure out the things that you can get working on as a team right now, maybe allocating some time each week to make progress. There's probably also some stuff in there that's just a bit big. So maybe you need tools, maybe you need resources, or maybe you need time carving out. In which case, those are things to go and escalate to your leadership and have a conversation about those things that you need. Also, as you're going through those items, think about the things that, if the worst were to happen, would have the greatest negative impact to you and your organization, and prioritize this first. Don't try and do everything in one go. Rome wasn't built in a day, and neither is going to be operational excellence. So figure focus on what you can do and what you can do right now and what's going to give you the greatest benefit. And then share and highlight with folk who need to be aware of the risks that the business has about what else needs to be done and get help. If you do have access to a TAM, just as we were just saying, do reach out and uh, get feedback from them if you've self-reviewed or engage them to help you go through and do a milestone review on what you've already got today to help you take it to the next level. The other thing was iterating. We've mentioned it a few times. I tend to bang on about it, but keep moving forward. Make small improvements, measure, celebrate the successes, create a milestone and move forward. Before long, you'll have made significant progress just as the other customers that I've worked with in the past have. But it's that thing of being able to make small incremental changes frequently to keep moving forward. Okay, Rob, do we have any more questions from the... Hey, Chris, uh, no more questions from the chat. So really appreciate uh, everything that you've gone over today. And again, it really is a great thing to be able to do these operations of you, even by yourself in the console, right? Like you said, be able to make those measurable changes, keep track of them and do all of that. So definitely really important to get in there and do them. Um, and of course, take a look Definitely, at the pillars yeah. as well. Uh, 
And it can also be a really, really useful thing in terms of within operations, there's generally going to be one or two folks that have been around for a long time and they carry a, a heck of a knowledge in their heads. Mm-hmm. And then there's going to be folk who have not been around so very long and, well, it gives an opportunity to discuss those things and, and share some of that knowledge. So good thing all around. Yep, for sure. Yeah, get some of that, uh, you know, brained up out of there into somewhere where it can go be referenced by other people as well. So appreciate everything that you covered today and showing us into the well-architected tool and looking at some different items. So um, for the audience, uh, no, we didn't have a lot of questions today, but if you think of any after today's show, um, please feel free to post those questions on repost.aws that Chris mentioned earlier, where one of our experts can provide you with an answer to question it, and it may even become a topic for one of our future shows. Uh, if you have any feedback for us, please check the chat box on the right. I will post that link to the survey uh, again over there. Or you can feel free to email us at awssupportsu at amazon.com because we really do want to hear from you to let us know what else you'd like to see on the show. And speaking about questions on reposts being answered, if you join us next Monday, August 15th at 11 a.m. Pacific time, we're going to be answering some of those user questions from a repost.aws, specifically questions around the topic of compute. So if you have questions for our experts about compute, please check the chat for a link to our post on repost and leave us your questions there as well. So thank you for joining us. AWS supports you and happy cloud computing, everyone.